Hello once again students, I'm Christopher Hanlon of Eastern Illinois University. This is Charles Warham, also of Eastern Illinois University, and we are here with the Close Reading Cooperative, the podcast and literary analysis for English majors. We're out here at the Campus Pond, as you'll see in um, the background there. Uh, beautiful, we're out here, beautiful pond. Beautiful pond here on campus. And we're out here for a specific reason today. What is that? Well, it's a beautiful fall day and it's nice to be outside, but fall days remind me that winter's coming and this pond, if it existed in a place that had a reasonable winter, would be, uh, would be flooded and we'd have people skating on it all winter long, hockey, pickup games, mm -hmm. skating, little figure skating, triple Lutz jumps mm -hmm. going like a, on. Like a Robert Frost poem. Like a Robert Frost poem, for example, or a uh, Rock Carrier novel. That's a reference no one will get. Uh, but today we also have the reason that I think about ponds and ice and hockey is because I have a poem that I think you're going to love. Oh, oh, great. A poem yeah. that we're going to take a look I at, love poems. Uh, and I, I think that I think that it has a lot to say about uh, about literary devices and other other such things. But it's also a, a poem with. It's just, it's just, it's a beautiful thing. I, I'll, I'll read it to you. This, and, okay, this is and, great. Uh, yeah. uh, can I, and maybe you could even like, you know, stop me when you hear something that you think is particularly uh, um, uh, noteworthy as far as how uh, its literary uh, okay. qualities are okay. concerned. Okay. All right, I will. Okay. Th this is the poem. I'm saving for her next pair of skates. I'm saving for when she outgrows her shoulder pads. I'm saving for the next ten years of hockey fees. I'm saving for the things she'll learn, and the amazing person she'll become. What are you this, saving for? This, this isn't, Charles, this is like an advertisement. I've heard this on, this is an advertisement no, it's, for, no, it's not. this is an advertisement on, from no, TV for a major department store. No, no, it's not. Who shall go unnamed, but. It uh, isn't. No, it isn't. Uh, well, it sounds like an ad. I mean, it sounds, it's, it's, and besides, it's sloppy. Well, it's, it's. even if it were, I mean, even if, and I'm not saying it is, even if it were, don't you think that it has, a power. Don't you think that it has a power that's created through the use of language that it, you can... To tell you the truth, I find it a little irritating because, I mean, I, it, it is an ad. I've seen that ad, all right? And what happens over the course of those words is that saving comes to mean the opposite of saving. It's, it's about spending, right? Yeah. You know? They're trying to get us to buy stuff at the major Ooh. department store that shall remain nameless. Right? Well, I d I'm not saying that this is a beautiful poem, and I think you can see pitch. how the language works to create that meaning. I mean, what do you hear when you hear, I'm saving for, I'm saving for, I'm, I'm saving well, for? Like, well, I mean, there's this repetition of that phrase. Uh, there's a specific word that you use for that, and it's called anaphora. When you hear, anaphora. you hear the same words, or even just one word. You know, at the beginning of a phrase of poetry, you, or perhaps even in prose, you can hear the same sentences over and over again. Politicians use this all the time. You can hear them say things like, uh, five years have passed. Well, I'm thinking of Tinter and Abbey. That's not a politician. But in any case, you hear the same, uh, the same, the same words at the beginning of well, sentences okay, so, over and so over. So anaphora, is this, anaphora. Kind of, is this kind of repetition you're talking about? So, so that, so that's like that. I have an example. This is this from Ralph Waldo Emerson. That that great moment in Self Reliance when he says, you know, it's okay to contradict yourself. You say, you know, say whatever it is you think at the moment, and then he says, ah, then you should be sure to be misunderstood. Is it so bad then to be misunderstood? Pythagoras was misunderstood, and Jesus was misunderstood. You know, to be great is to be misunderstood. That, that's 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 cool. not that's not anaphora. That's epistrophe, for heaven's sakes. That is at the end of a phrase. Completely different, Chris. Oh, sorry. There's no, sorry. well, okay. there is kind of a rhetorical similarity in the effect. I'll grant you that. But that's called epistrophe. Okay. You could even call it a, a epiphora. Some, un, uh, un, un, for some reason, some people call it epiphora. But epistrophe is okay. the word that's up. So, anaphora, name. repetition at the beginning. Right. Epistrophe, repetition at the end. And look at how it works here. You have, I'm saving for, I'm saving for, and finally at the end you have the, the gut-wrenching question, what are you saving for? <laughs> And think about how that word saving means at the end of the at the end of the phrase. What are you saving for? It really hits you in your well, um yeah. Okay. 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 Perhaps. Think, no. Okay. Well it's that, that, but it does it, it makes the word saving turn from something that is like a like a negative thing, like actually putting money in the bank, to a pleasant thing, which is actually spending more money. And in that way, you'll have enough money. 
I guess I guess I get what you're saying. It's really kind of a uh, kind of a negative thing at the it's, end of the day. It's it, you are right though. There is a literary quality uh, at work in this ad, yeah. um, and it is an ad. Um, okay, so epistrophe, repetition at the end, anaphora, repetition at the beginning. Right, and that's and I think the lesson that we learn here, the lesson that we learn is that it doesn't matter where you find texts, they still can be looked at through close reading, right? And in an effective way. We'll see you next week on the Close Reading Cooperative.